book, and this will be non-technical and okay. I will try to ask the audience one single question. You, you all know this kind of card, which is a credit card. And in Europe, we all have them, every one of us. <laughs> and here is another type of card, which is this one, that, that we call crypto card. But it can do a lot more, like uh, manage your identity, uh, sign, and, and, um, and connect to VPS. Okay, how many of you know, well, are using or know people who are using this kind of card? Okay. And how many of you have, have never used them? Oh, <laughs> just a few, okay. In fact, it appears that in, in, in a large public, very few people are using crypto cards. Maybe you're, you're, you're developers. So I, I, I missed a little bit my, my presentation, but uh, I mean, this is, in my opinion, uh, an issue and one of the and one of the goal here is to try to understand how we could better integrate uh, crypto hardware into various environments and how we could improve usability because this is important that people uh, want to buy this kind of cards that you can find very easily and can use them. So actually, I made a short presentation um, around. <coughs> made a short presentation on hardware and standards to basically show the two kinds of uh, hardware that we have: crypto and what what we call one-time passwords. These are little little uh, devices with a button and you press and you obtain uh, uh, so first maybe I will give it to the audience so that that you can have a look at this during the presentation okay and I will also discuss and try to present very briefly the the OpenSC library okay but this will, will be very short and uh, I will present the 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 state of integration in operating system and applications. But I will not present everything. I will do something very short. Then in the end, after my presentation, I will go in the audience and will try to give uh, free crypto tools to the audience. So if you already have a good crypto tool, maybe try to leave the crypto tools for others, okay? And, uh, and also I will stand in the back, and if you want more information, you have a laptop, I can uh, initialize the crypto tool with you and, and show you how, how it works. Okay, so let, let's go on. Hardware standards. Basically, a lot of companies say, okay, we, we offer USB tokens, but the USB token is basically uh, a, a small reader, PCSC reader, with a crypto chip, okay? Okay, uh, if, if you already use these crypto tools, then you know why you always should use hardware devices. Because these devices are kept to preserve a secret. It's not possible to, to open the chip or try to read inside the chip to have access to the RSA key. It has protection. It's, it's nearly impossible if you try to to open and read using um, special tools, then the 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 then the, the 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 chip will destroy itself. Okay. Also, the the the, the power of this tool is, is that it, it is able to to compute the secrets and to do the authentication or encryption and decryption work without displaying the RSA secret. Okay. One. A very important issue is that when, when you use a crypto stick or a smart card, then you have them with you, and they're like the keys of your cards. If you lose them, you know that there's, there's, there's a problem, okay? And that's, that's, that's very important in the definition of these tools, is that they're so small, either to, to be on your, on your keys or to be in your wallet, okay? 
So basically, there are uh, there are two standards. There is a standard for <coughs> radius, which is PCSC, and this is the PCSC working group, which is working on it. Okay, which which defined first the the interaction, and then there is the RSA company, which which has set up ver various PKCS. Um, various PKCS interfaces, and the main are PKCS 11 and, and uh, 15. 15 is, is the way that information is stored in co on card, and 11 is <coughs> the way that you discuss with the device. Okay. So this is the second type of, uh, of, uh, of security tool. It is not a, exactly a crypto tool, because the definition of a crypto tool by law is that you have access to the to the chip. For example, if you have a, a, a video decoder inside inside a, a video machine or, um, or or a dish machine, then it's not considered a crypto tool because there's there's, there's a, uh, a chip, but this chip cannot be accessed and you cannot interact with the chip. And also, uh, vendors that I discussed with made statistics about users using. Um, smart cards and they discovered that 30% of users were never able to configure their uh, their operating system to use smart cards. So they, they decided to work on a, on a little degraded security devices that in fact computer secret, there's a secret inside and uh, by pressing the button you will generate a series of passwords. But this kind of, uh, of security device is uh, is vulnerable to man in the middle attack. It means that if you have this kind of uh, of security device and you generate a password, for example, to log on your your bank account, if you receive an email which says, "Okay, log on," because there's there's a problem, if you press the button and there's a man in the middle attack, your password may be may be. Uh, but it's a huge progress upon traditional password strategies. Also, it's very cheap to, to, to buy. And there is no contact with the, with the <coughs> interface of the computer. So you, so you don't have to, to configure um, drivers, and you don't have to learn the people how to use this, uh, this, this device. And it, it's very similar to the way that people uh, live and remember passwords. Okay. So uh, it's, it's really complementary. And based on the level of security that you need, you may implement one of those. Okay? And there are two, there are two main uh, RFCs. The, the first one is for, is even based, based. It means that when you press the button, then your password is uh, always valid. It's valid until you use it. So if you press the button in the morning, and you come back in the evening and you connect to your computer, it will work. So uh, they, they also then worked on, a, on an extension of this uh, protocol, which is a TOTP, which is time-based. There's a time frame from 30 seconds to 60 seconds, and you have to connect during the 60 seconds. And our tokens uh, show a little display, and you know that you have 60 seconds to connect. So, um, also, people fear that the, the, the tokens may lose the time. Because you, you notice on computers that the, that, the, that the time needs to be synchronized. So uh, most servers allow to synchronize the tokens. Okay? So it's, it's not a real problem. And these tokens are designed to work four years, pressing 70 times a day. So they can be pressed 100,000 times without losing uh, synchronization. So it's, it's, pretty, it's a pretty interesting uh, tool. But it's not a crypto tool. A lot of companies will say, we provide two-factor OTP, uh, because it's a two-factor device. Yes, but it's not crypto device, because you, you, you cannot make any, any encryption for it. Okay, uh, when you use an operating system, you must deliver a promise. You promise something to the user. If you go to, to a cash machine, then the promise is that when you 
put the, the car inside of it, it will give you some money. Okay, but that's the front. So when people use this kind of tool to connect to the computers, they have, in fact, in, but it's my opinion, you know, uh, they have, there are two promises. The first promise is to be able to connect to your computer. A lot of people consider that, well, this is really private information, it, the computer can be stolen, it's important to be able to connect. The second one is to be able to manage your identity. This includes signing emails, uh, accessing to encrypted websites, remote authentication, etc., etc. Okay. So I was wondering, in, in my own opinion, why so few people in the large public use these crypto cards? You know, I, I'm not going to lie and say, yeah, a lot of people use them. <coughs> Well, this technology has been around for 30 years. It should be on every computer, but it's not. So, so I tried to, to compare the, the, the state of integration in, uh, in Windows Vista, Mac OS, and uh, GNU Linux, but to present something very, very easy. The, the <coughs> Well, Win Windows has, has support for PKCS. It means that it's, Windows is able to read PKCS 11 and 15 cards. It says we support this protocol, but it does that in an abstraction layer. This layer is, is kind of a, is a library called the, the uh, Win, Win, WinS card. And they say we support it, but they support it through their library. So a lot of, uh, of um, third-party software, like for example, IceWizzle or uh, other uh, software are not supported uh, by default. So vendors uh, like Fashion, who produces this card, offer proprietary PKCS11 libraries. And one of the goals of OpenSC is to offer a free library to, to access uh, to, uh, to, to use PKCS 11. Also, OpenSC is working on a Windows, a full Windows CSP driver. So it's already in, in uh, SVN, it's, it's, it's working, it's getting better. And soon you will be able to use a full free solution under Windows. And this will be, that, that will be kind of a revolution. Okay, uh, also, uh, I, I told you that, that there was a promise it was to be able to log on. The problem with Windows is that to, able, to be able to log on, you need a Windows server, 2003 server. So you, you need to invest a lot of money. As a result, the market is shrinking. The market is not uh, very well developed. So I, I made a, um, a few example of screenshots of a, of a tool called MarsMart Logon that tries to fill this gap. That's very nice. And you can have a look at the software and try to develop something similar for the new Linux, which is you have this smart card logon uh, button here. You click, your card is configured or, or it's not. If you have just bought this card on a shop for a few, uh, few euros, then you just insert the card and you can <coughs> and you can configure it. You can either create your own certificate, you can use an existing certificate, you can import one, that's very easy. And then in the end, you'll be able to log. But when you will be able to log, you will also be able to change the pin code. So it's completely integrated for the, for the end user, and it makes things very easy. Okay, this is just an example. Now, as for GNU Linux, we have now a very good framework, which is, well, two frameworks, which, which, has, which, which are a PCSC muscle framework. This is the way that, we, that the readers are recognized. Now we're focusing more on CCID subsystem because it's, it's like a, a SCSC for, for, for disk or, or SATA, it's very, very common. So all readers are compatible. And we also provide a PKC11 library. And this library will, will, will be able to discuss without this smart card, okay? And the smart, uh, and, uh, and the smart card will, will act as a repository. How do I do okay. 
Bubbles. Now, about the promise to connect. Of course, Linux has spam. So there are two PAM <coughs> possibilities. PAM P11, PAM PKCS11. You can even connect to uh, LDFP, SSH cables, mappers. You can have those mappers. It means that you can connect over a network to a shared server and manage your identity on a network. It's very, very advanced. But there is no, there is no real GNOME end user feature that allows like a smart logout to log in very easily. Okay? But it's not a problem. As for MapOS, it's a complete, uh, it's, it's also very special. They, they, they decided to say, okay, well, we're going to develop our own PCSC muscle interface. They took it like that, they applied patches, and they tried to, to make it their own. At the same time, they developed a framework called Token. Okay? But now let's have a look at this connection promise. Like I said, it's charitable to, to set up. You, you enter smart card logon, Mac OS 6, and you, you have a technical data, and this, that's, there's eight pages to read. So this, is, this is only for Mac OS 6 for 10.4, which Four. is basically dead. For 10.5 yeah. and 6, you can actually do it pretty easily. Okay, so uh, it's, it's, it's my fault because our users uh, try to, to do it and, uh, and we're not able to do it. But they have, the, the idea is that like on, on the Windows side, they, they, they have this another instruction library. Okay? So it's also possible to have OpenSC on, on Mac OS so that you have a complete framework on uh, Windows, Mac OS, and uh, and uh, Linux, okay? Okay, uh, now let's have a look at applications. As I said in the beginning, but this is my opinion, <laughs> uh, people using uh, crypto tools are not very common. Maybe developers or hackers, uh, but not not your, your brother and your mother and your, your friends. So most of the time, crypto, crypto features are kind of hidden. I will show you just three examples, and this, this will be the end of my presentation. Because you feel they have been developed, but in the end, they have been added after other features that were based on software crypto. And we know that software crypto is not the same as hardware crypto. It's not as, uh, as reliable. This is the example of Putty. Putty, you know, have millions of users. And if you want to, to use a smart card, that's quite difficult. It took me maybe one day to understand how to set it up. You have to go here. First, you need to download a special version of Putty, which is called Putty CAC. Then, in this special version that has not been updated for maybe two years, you go to this PKCLS11. And you click there, and after you click, you will have to put your library. After you put the library, then you have the token info, and then you can you have the level of your card, you click open. And I think it will ask you for the PIN code. But you see, it's not the way that end users will ever adopt crypto. <laughs> I think they will never adopt it if you compare. With, with a newer version of uh, PCSC, it's, that, that run automatically through, uh, through um, hub. Uh, it's through hub, I think. It's, you're, you're able to detect that, that there was an insert, and then you can do an action. And you don't have to, to configure all these kind of things. Okay? So there's a, in, in the case of Putty, okay, SSH clients. Uh, they have had the patch for crypto for maybe four or five years. They never implemented it. Then a guy implemented his own crypto library. To use SSH, it's the same problem. Of course, it's a command line, so, but you, you have to add the library, but when you stop using it, you have to put D for delete. 
It means that when you unplug it, you have to say afterwards, before you unplug, you have to say delete. But SSH should be able, if the library doesn't respond, to run delete itself. And this is the kind of, uh, of issue that you have on nearly every software <laughs> that makes it very difficult. So uh, I hope the, the SSH developer is not among, is not here. I, I'm not doing a flame war, you know? I'm, not show, I'm just showing you what, what kind of drawbacks, uh, in my opinion, stop the market from growing a lot. Okay, Firefox Eyes Weasel. It's the same. We could imagine that Firefox under Windows or Linux could detect, detect the library itself. Well, it's very well hidden. You have to look for security devices. You all know that. Then you add the what, PKCS library. You have to configure it. Then you have to maybe log in, or when you go to SSL, you automatically log in. But it's, it's, it's kind of complicated for, for end users, especially in companies or in a large organization where people are not software developers. Okay? So, a as a conclusion, it's, uh, it's my conclusion is that we have a very good <coughs> framework now which is called OpenSC. It works on all platforms. It will soon be available even for a CSP driver. It will provide a, a Windows driver. I don't know if it, 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 it will be a mini CSP, but it will deliver a large number of features, but the integration uh, lacks, in my opinion, a better usability. Okay. And uh, I hope that this is why we, we are all here is to discuss, is to organize a discussion and try to to understand how we can improve uh, things. Uh, and so that you can start contributing to OpenSC. But to help you start contributing, we offer free, free, even free, free, free token, free host token, or free smart cards to people interested. Usually we, we, we do that on the website, but today I will offer you, I, I will come to you and offer you some hardware, if you need some, okay? Otherwise I will offer it to other people. So thank you for listening, and I will... Thank you.